This is Smart Pizza, and in today's hour long episode, I'll show you some incredible cases and moments of animals saving other animals as well as people. You'll see a tiger that protected a man from a leopard, an elephant that helped a man not to drown in the river, a dog that pulled a cat out of the pond, and elephants that saved their calf from the crocodile clutches. In addition, you'll learn what happens when people find themselves in an enclosure with wild animals and see what happens when animals adopt and raise other animal species babies and even humans. You heard it right. In this episode, I'll tell you about some real Mowgli people. Sit back, relax, and let's go. Deer and Rabbit Chris Miller, who works in a park in Wisconsin, was trimming trees and at one point found a breathless, red-tailed hawk with signs of trauma on the ground. The park was under video surveillance, and the man used the footage to determine why the bird had died. As it turned out, the fearsome bird of the Ocipetridae family was subdued by a slim deer. The hawk had caught a small rabbit and was about to eat it. Prey made loud, shrill noises, to which a white-tailed deer ran by. It abruptly changed direction, fearlessly pounced on the predator and began kicking and biting it. The bird loosened its grip and the rabbit was able to escape. But the deer acquired the taste so much that it desired to finish the job. The cloven-hoofed one kicked the bird until it stopped resisting. After that, the hero joined its congeners and went off into the woods. Goat, Rooster, and Hen Hawks are getting beaten not only by deer but also by smaller animals. A surveillance camera installed on a farm in the Netherlands captured an amazing scene of a northern goshawk swooping down on a young hen strolling through the grass. This is the largest species of hawk. The birds are over half a meter in length, have a wingspan of about one meter, and can fly at a speed of up to 61 kilometers per hour during the flight. Such a formidable opponent, the hen could not cope alone. But luckily, the rooster came to its aid. A local goat named Bruin also decided to help. While the rooster pecked the hawk, Bruin pecked it. Together, they recaptured the hen from the hawk. The hen fled, but the furious rescuers didn't stop the fight. The bird itself had to admit defeat and fly away quickly so as to not be killed. Buffalo and Lizard Tourists in Kruger National Park in South Africa decided to film young lions resting near a river. At one point, one of the predators disappeared into the bushes and soon emerged with its prey, a large lizard. This is where the filming began. The predator and its offspring huddled together, ready to celebrate a successful hunt and feast on the reptile, when suddenly a buffalo appeared and disrupted their plans. The herbivore decided to save the reptile, kicked the lion, and threw it a couple of meters into the air. It looked brutal. Of course, after such humiliation, the predators had to forget about the lizard, and the reptile itself took advantage of the commotion and escaped. Dog and Fawn Alabama resident Ralph Dorn noticed his dog, Harley, wasn't around one evening during a walk. By this time, the pet usually comes home. So Ralph looked out the window to make sure Harley was okay. Living by the lake, Ralph realized that the dog was now busy with important things. Harley was swimming in the middle of the pond, trying to save a fawn. The fawn almost became a victim of the water element. Even grown-up deer get tired quickly when swimming across rivers, while fawns regularly drown. Luckily for the fawn, it survived the day thanks to the heroic Harley. The dog swam to the right place and with all his might began to drive the young deer back to land, encouraging and not leaving it alone. The rescue operation ended safely. The fawn looked frightened, but soon its mother appeared from the bushes and the reunited family went about their business. Dogs are amazing creatures. Fawns are just one of the few animals that these four-legged beauties are willing to help. They also help others in need. Stay tuned to see how a dog rescued a cat, as well as other amazing moments of mutual assistance between animals of different species. Cat and Dog The cat and the dog are some of the main enemies in the animal world. 
Yes, in the home these creatures can get along and even become great friends. But in the street, they usually make no bones and arrange a brutal showdown with each other. But not in this case. This cat got into the water and couldn't get out. A dog came to the tailed creature and began to examine the poor fellow. You can see that the cat's scared. It hits the dog with its paw on its face and scratches it, but the dog doesn't react to this. Now it's thinking of a rescue plan. When the plans matured, the dog jumped into the water, cat on its back, and together they climbed up. There are reverse situations, too, when dogs need help. This black cat had been fussing around some crevice for a long time, so the eyewitnesses decided to turn on the camera to see how it would end. Turns out a dog had somehow gotten into the crevice. The dog was big enough, so it couldn't get out on its own. When the black cat couldn't get the dog out with its paws, it decided to sneak in and push it itself. The plan worked. The cat pushed the dog out, and soon it got out on its own. Orangutan and Duckling Images in which a large animal is helping a small animal are always touching and surprising. Here we can see such footage. A tiny duckling snuck into the enclosure where the orangutan lived. It went to a small pond and fell in the water. The tiny duckling had hatched from an egg several days ago and couldn't swim at all. The owner of the enclosure itself came to the rescue of the drowning one. At first, the orangutan tried to pull it out with the help of a leaf, pulling it toward the shore, and then, to the cheering of the public, grabbed it by the beak and carried it to the ground. After the chick had recovered somewhat, the monkey began to gently stroke it and examine it. You don't see that kind of care very often. Duck and Fish Not only do ducks get into bad situations, but they can also try to help others when they're in trouble. Here we see just a scene. The duck sits in the food trough, dips the food into the water, and the hungry fish, which have been unable to find food for a long time, immediately gobble up the treat. As for me, it can also be called a rescue because the duck helps the fish not starve to death. In general, to be honest, the duck does not really help the fish. More precisely, it does it not quite consciously. In fact, the bird dips the food into the water trying to moisten it. The fish simply take the opportunity to grab something or pick up the crumbs that have fallen. This can be seen on other occasions with other birds and fish. In any case, it can be called a rescue and help, though not a conscious one. And the main thing is that everyone remains happy. Killer Whales and Whales While I'm on the subject of water, why not consider marine animals? A few months ago, while observing whales and other marine life, guides from an Australian tour company saw several orcas, which, judging by their activity, were stalking prey. Soon a potential prey was spotted. A huge humpback whale that was in an unnatural position backed down. In addition, the animal was entangled in the ropes and was weakened. Usually orcas don't mind to eat humpback whale, but this time they were noble and freed the whale from the ropes. Scientists have long known that orcas are social and highly intelligent animals that are capable of compassion for their own kind. But this case of helping another species was a novelty, even for experienced researchers. By the way, did you know that one of the relatives of whales is a mammal that lives in hot Africa? As strange as it may sound, it's a hippo. For a long time, it was assumed that hippos were close relatives of pigs, but modern science says that hippos are closer to whales because hippos and whales had a common ancestor millions of years ago. Apparently, this is why hippos, like whales, are able to come to the aid of those in need. In this case, an antelope was in trouble when a crocodile clung to it. The poor thing tried to resist for about a minute, but the crocodile kept biting harder and harder and kept pulling it into the pond. Two hippos intervened. The giant swam to the scene and chased the reptile away. The antelope was saved. Even though it injured its leg, it still managed to survive, and that's the most important thing. Hippos also help other defenseless herbivores in Africa. For example, zebras. In this footage, we see a zebra lying quietly in a pond for a while. Suddenly, it started floundering. A crocodile attacked it underwater. Fortunately for it, 
it all happened in the territory of hippos, so these giants quickly subdued the reptile and saved the striped creature from certain death. But hippos are not the main altruists of Africa. In this regard, elephants stand out more. Let's see how these giants save their congeners and even a human. A herd of elephants and a crocodile. Visitors to a national park in Africa accidentally managed to film a not very pleasant incident. A reptile attack was also caught on camera while filming elephants. During a watering, a crocodile suddenly grabbed an elephant by the trunk. It started screaming and shook its head, trying to shake the crocodile off, but to no avail. The adults trumpeted and began to retreat while trying to protect the other babies, but one of the adult elephants couldn't stay away and managed to chase the predator away. Elephants at the watering hole First shot, elephants come to the watering hole. Second shot, a little baby elephant is already floundering in the water and can't get up to the others. Adult elephants use their trunks to try and help it. However, they can't get it out that way. Then one of the elephants goes down into the water while the others on the shore continue to help with their trunks. Next, another elephant goes into the water. Unfortunately, the video of the rescue operation is clipped because in the following footage, the full family is already on the shore with the baby elephant that comes to its senses. The main thing is that everything turned out okay. In general, elephants live in family groups and are in constant contact with other families. It's interesting that in elephant communities, matriarchy reigns. A herd of elephants, which includes 10 to 40 individuals, consists mainly of females and their offspring. The family group is headed by an adult experienced female, the so-called keeper of the family history and knowledge. Males usually live alone on the side. All the females of the herd take care of the babies together as if they were their own relatives. Mothers may also leave a baby elephant in the care of their sisters so they can learn about future motherhood. Elephants at the Zoo Here's surveillance footage at the Seoul Zoo. A baby elephant first frolics near a pond under the supervision of an adult elephant. Then within seconds it loses its balance and falls into the pool. Apparently the bottom is too deep for it and it can't get out on its own. The adult elephants obviously panic, but their quick reaction and teamwork help get the baby out of the trap. They rush into the water and in a few seconds they have the baby out of the water. Everything's good. These large animals behave like responsible parents, which is nothing short of amazing. Elephants and Dogs South Africa's Kruger National Park and the exciting confrontation between predators and herds of elephants. A park employee follows a group of African wild dogs. Before his eyes and now before ours, a pack of predators gathered on a road that was being crossed by a herd of elephants. The elephants didn't particularly like such neighbors. They defiantly stood in the middle of the road and the adults stepped forward to protect the babies. And of course, the elephants were not without their feature. They began to trumpet menacingly. Even though the dogs, one by one, went into the thicket and the threat as such was no longer there, the elephant still continued to stand at the intersection, obstructing the movement of the car. But people probably didn't mind admiring these majestic animals for a while longer. An Elephant Saves a Man Here is a wonderful video with a charming protagonist. No, luckily nobody drowns here. This is a Thai sanctuary in the city of Chiang Mai. It's designed to save these majestic and intelligent animals. And the man in the water is park ranger Derek Thompson. This is staging designed to test the elephant's reaction. And as we can see, a little elephant named Kamla, seeing a drowning man in a raging storm, immediately rushed to save him. I think the test was a success. Kamla swam after the drowning and helped him to get out of the opposite bank with its trunk. Note how Kamla protected Derek with its body from the surge of the water. It's amazing how sensitive and soft-hearted these animals can be. The Elephant Helps the Baby A wild elephant filmmaker in Botswana captured a very interesting episode in the life of wild elephants. Driving along the river, Kim Wallhunter saw a herd of elephants returning from a watering. They were climbing up the cliff. Among the adult elephants, there were several teenagers and one small baby elephant. It couldn't get over the obstacle no matter how hard this little beauty tried. Incredibly, the elephant came to its aid, pushing the baby with its tusks and trunk to the top. An interesting moment, right? 
What's even more interesting is that an elephant brain weighs about 5 kilograms. Can you imagine? Such a brain of impressive size awarded the animals with remarkable intelligence. According to scientists, elephants, along with humans, chimpanzees, and dolphins are able to recognize their image in the mirror. Moreover, elephants are among the few animals that can use so-called tools. For example, observations of Indian elephants have shown that they use branches as flappers. Despite their peaceful disposition, these animals can be extremely aggressive and can also attack humans. And there are several reasons for this. For example, this is how they protect their offspring. Or attacks occur during their mating season. Oh, no. oh, oh my god, that's a boo. Or the attacks can be explained by the fact that they're frightened and are absolutely sure that a human is a threat to them. Chasing tourists. Here comes the attack. While well, touring a South African safari, the author of the video thought it was her last day because her tour group was being chased by a huge male elephant. At first, it seemed like the most ordinary encounter, which could have boded no harm, but that was only until the animals started giving warning signs that something was bound to happen now if the tourist didn't get away. Fortunately, the guide realized the possible risks and began to pull away. The elephant, not wanting to lose sight of these uninvited guests, began to chase the off-roader. The group of tourists, understandably, began to panic. The animal caught up with them, and the guide even turned off the road to the right and drove off-road straight through the grass. It worked. The elephant slowed down and eventually stopped. It's hard to imagine what would have happened if this giant had caught up with the car. I hope these tourists realize how lucky they were then. And here, people find themselves in the middle of a huge elephant stampede. The tourists are forced to stop immediately so that the car is not inadvertently trampled. They do not even have time to realize what happened there, when suddenly the elephant runs out of the bushes and starts warning trumpeting. This really scares the people in the car. The elephant continues to stand its ground, walks away, and runs out again. As soon as this unfriendly giant leaves the scene, its offspring leaps out of the bushes on the other side of the bus. Just moments later, the entire herd of elephants returns to see what's going on and what these creatures are gawking at them. Note, their babies are nearby, and we remember how elephants feel about that. Eventually, the guide starts the engine and people leave the area. It didn't work this time either. A car or a tree? Here, the two safari off-roaders drove too close to the huge elephant, which could have easily created a scene. At first, it appears that the animal is busy looking at a tree and is far enough away from the cars, but the cars are not invisible, so the giant decides to get closer. At this point, the driver tries to drive away so as to not endanger the tourists, but the road seems to be blocked by another car. The tourists bend over to avoid eye contact with the inhabitant of the place. The elephant is next to the car for a few more minutes and then swings its tusks into the tree. Is it angry or frustrated? It looks around at the people for a while and then walks away proudly. Do you think the elephant remembers these people? I think it did, because these giants have a good memory. But it's an exaggeration to say that elephants don't forget anything. Elephants have a very well-developed hippocampus, which is responsible for spatial memory, as well as the transition of short-term memory into long-term ones. Such skills are essential for survival. For example, if a herd has experienced a drought, a baby elephant can remember this. As an adult, an elephant can already recognize the first signs of impending drought in the region and leave the territory. Elephants also memorize the locations of water bodies and have no problem recognizing members of their own family. Elephant Rescues Buffalo The concept of mutual assistance is familiar to elephants. They can come to the aid not only of their congeners but also to other animals. For example, here a buffalo became prey to a lion. The predator mercilessly grabs its skin with its teeth and it looks like the bull is going to die. But look, our giant is moving toward the scene. The lion, seeing it, immediately leaves the poor ungulate alone. The elephant seems to be pissed off that such mayhem is going on in its territory. Elephant and Rhino And vice versa. Elephants can fight with someone for territory. Oh no, man, what the hell? Clearly won the fight. Animals can not only save each other, 
but also replace other animals' parents by raising and adopting other animal species' babies. Stay tuned to see how a cat raises hedgehogs, a turtle becomes a friend to a hippo, and a huge gorilla plays with the kittens as if they were its own babies. Cat and Hedgehogs How can you get along with a whole crowd of hedgehogs? Well, this cat clearly loves a challenge. Not only is it taking care of a litter of hoglets, but it's also trying to replace its orphaned offspring with their mother. Surprisingly, the cat's milk seems to suit its stepchildren just fine. The maternal instinct kicked in as soon as the box with the newborn animals appeared at home. In the first week, the hoglets are not much different from kittens. They're weak, blind, and bald. Now they've grown up stronger and have become too radically different from their adoptive mother. It's not known how the cat feels, spending all day long side by side with the prickly creatures, but if its owner's to be believed, it's not going to abandon its brood. Hippo and Turtle Hippos are considered one of the most dangerous animals on the planet, but turtles, on the other hand, are hardly feared. However, these two animals were destined to become friends under very curious circumstances. Owen the Hippo came to the rehabilitation center of the nature reserve as a baby. In the center's enclosure, Owen was obviously bored, but the staff could do nothing to help it. The little hippo decided to make friends with its closest neighbor, a turtle named Mzi. However, it's worth noting that Mzi was very big for a turtle. In size, it was almost equal to Owen, although at first it was afraid of the hippo. Owen and Mzi quickly became inseparable. However, their friendship was destined to end one day, when the hippo became too big to safely interact with the turtle it was moved to a separate enclosure. It didn't get bored. By that time, they had already found a female who moved in with it. It's unknown whether the friends remembered each other after the forced separation, but I want to believe that friendship doesn't end so quickly and easily. Coco and the Kittens Many animal lovers know this story. Coco the Gorilla, which unfortunately is no longer alive, can safely be considered a unique primate. It enjoyed watching Robin Williams movies, mastered basic emotional intelligence very early, and began to subtly sense relationships between creatures. However, experienced biologists immediately realized that the gorilla, which lived in the monkey orphanage, really wanted to have babies of its own. However, for a variety of reasons, it was not possible. So that the monkey didn't get bored, these shelter workers who cared for Coco put two kittens in its enclosure. Initially, some workers feared that such an experiment could end disastrously. However, events began to develop quite differently. A touching video shows Coco playing with the kittens. Apparently, the gorilla understands what fragile creatures it's dealing with. The monkey gently cuddles them, trying not to crush them. The gorilla tries to teach the kittens to play with toys. It takes a bite out of a toy pie, inviting its new friends to follow her example. This educational work was filmed by its handlers. Speaking of cats, as it turns out, these animals are not only capable of babysitting hoglets or playing with their adoptive mother gorilla, in terms of adopting other animals, they're second to none. Stay tuned to see what other cubs cats have raised, as well as to see other amazing examples of friendships between different species of animals. Let's move on. A cat named Catherine was supposed to have offspring soon, but fate decided otherwise. The animal was found in an abandoned warehouse. The new owners quickly realized that Catherine's condition was critical. They took it to the vets, but it became clear that the vets would not be able to save the kittens. After the surgery, Catherine was moved to an animal shelter. It didn't lose its will to live. It got along with other animals and people, but the staff could see that its longing for its lost motherhood didn't go away. That all changed when a whole litter of orphaned puppies came into the shelter. Catherine had clearly found its calling. Ever since, it spent all its time surrounded by its foster sons. At first, the puppies were a little confused, but the desire to find a mother won, and the animals of different species became a real family. Catherine began to think of the puppies as its own children. It fed them, guarded them, and even licked their fur to tidy it up. Ruby and Animals Ruby the dog is an honorary employee of an Australian rehabilitation center. This center takes in animals which have been abused. Ruby's life wasn't exactly rosy in the past either, but once here it's found its true calling. Since 2009, the dog has become an indispensable assistant to the staff of the center. Ruby enjoys spending time with the animals in its care, no matter what species they belong to. It's equally friendly to sheep, 
birds, and even cats. What animal can the dangerous king of the jungle make friends with? As it turns out, it can be friends with a tiny dachshund. Both species peacefully coexist in one of the enclosures of an exotic park in Oklahoma. At the same time, the staff never noticed that the lion cub showed any aggression to the dogs. The lion, called Bone Digger, was brought to the center as a cub. It would not have survived in the wild due to a rare bone-destroying disease. Here it met a cheerful dachshund named Milo. Surprisingly, the couple became friends almost immediately. If you've watched this video carefully, you've probably already realized how strong the maternal instinct is in cats. Sometimes it extends to the most unusual species of animals. The cat in this video was able to teach the little squirrel its cat-like habits. A squirrel named Rocky was found by a woman named Karen Watkins after it fell from a tree. She was unable to return it to the nest, so she decided to put the animal in a box with her kittens and Emmy the cat. Emmy accepted the animal as its own and immediately began to take care of it. Now the squirrel thinks of it as its own mother. It even learned to purr like a cat. Rocky really loves its family, and it's fully learned all their traits and habits. And the squirrel's purring sounds amazing. Is it hard to surprise you? Then take a look at the heroes of the following story. Yes, it's a pigeon and a chihuahua, which became best friends. Part of the reason for their good relationship was a common misfortune. The pigeon, named German, was born with a rare anomaly that made it unable to fly, and the dog, named Lundy, could hardly move its paws. German quickly became friends with the other dogs which lived with it in the same house. However, it prefers to stay as close to Lundy as possible. Who knows, maybe together it's easier for them to overcome the injustice of fate. Chimpanzee and Tigers Many people adore domestic cats, and some monkeys, as it turned out, adore tigers. A female chimpanzee named Dudu is clearly capable of taking better care of animals than a cat or a dog, which was clearly demonstrated to the zoo staff. The primate thinks the tiger named Aaron is its best friend. Of course, in the wild, such friendship would be impossible, but in captivity, we have a unique opportunity to observe it. The zoo staff often posted touching videos of the communication between friends in the internet. Dudu hardly realized that one day its best friend would grow up to become a graceful and dangerous predator. It's a pity. I wish such a cute relationship could last a lifetime. Tigress adopts piglets. A Thai zoo worker decided to conduct an experiment in taming tigers. For this purpose, baby tigers were fed by a pig and piglets were given to the tigress. None of the mothers rejected the cubs. They took care of them, licked them, and fed them with milk. As zoo officials say, such mixing of species should make the tigers more docile and show them that sometimes other animal species are friends, not food. Dog and Lambs We all know that dogs are the most loyal creatures on the planet. A spaniel named Jess has clearly found its calling. The dog is great at looking after orphan lambs. The video is so cute that it seems staged. But Louise, the spaniel's owner, says she never forced her pet to do anything. The dog has always loved dragging things from place to place. When it was discovered that such a hobby could be useful, Jess became fascinated and has been bringing buckets of milk to the pasture every day since. The dog feeds a group of orphan lambs. One might observe that the dog hardly knows what it's doing, but I think it understands perfectly well. Would it sit still for long minutes if it didn't understand the importance of its actions? Everyone knows the story of Mowgli, but not many people know that in real life, children are sometimes raised by animals. From a boy raised by monkeys to an Indian raised by a pack of wolves. John Sabunya In 1988, four-year-old John Sabunya from Uganda witnessed a violent argument between his parents. John couldn't stand it. He ran away from home into the woods, where he stayed for a long time. As time passed, John continued to live in the woods although no one knew about it, so the locals began to think that the boy was no longer alive. In 1991, one of the locals went into the woods for firewood and saw a strange creature in a flock of vervet monkeys, in which she did not immediately recognize John. The guy behaved the same way as the monkeys. He was moving on all fours, climbing trees, and even communicating with the primates. The woman reported what she saw to the villagers, and they tried to catch John to bring him back to civilization. As is often the case with the children who got raised by animals, John resisted in every way 
not letting himself to be picked up, but the villagers managed to wrestle him away from the monkeys. When they washed him up, one of the villagers recognized him as the boy who'd gone missing in 1988. It took a long time for John to regain consciousness, get used to society, and learn to speak. The boy said that the monkeys taught him everything he needed to live in the jungle, climbing trees and finding food. In addition, John mastered their language. Fortunately, John successfully adapted to normal life. Now the grown-up Ugandan Mowgli is touring with the children's choir, the Pearl of Africa. Shamdio The story of an Indian boy named Shandio became known in 1972. That was the year he was found in the Indian jungle. As it turned out, he was about four years old at the time. When the boy was found, he was living his normal life, which included playing with wolf cubs. Yes, the child had been raised by wolves. This was indicated not only by the unusual games but also by the boy's appearance. Shamdio's skin was very dark and his teeth were pointed. He had long hooked fingernails, tangled hair, and calluses on his hands, elbows, and knees. But that's not all. Shamdio actively hunted chickens, ate soil, and loved blood. And of course, Shamdio was able to communicate with wolves. When the child was rescued from the jungle, he was able to socialize partially. The boy didn't learn to speak but learned sign language. In civilization, Shamdio continued to demonstrate his animal habits and features. For example, he got on well with dogs and even talked to them. Unfortunately, the wolf boy's life was short. In 1985, the Indian passed away. Marina Chapman In 1954, a five-year-old girl from Colombia named Marina Chapman was kidnapped. She was taken from a remote village in South America and abandoned in the jungle. Many children would have become victims of nature under such conditions, but Marina was lucky. She was raised by capuchin monkeys. She lived with a family of primates for five years until hunters found her. Fortunately, Marina was able to socialize, so she later described her life in the wild. She said she ate berries, roots, and bananas, slept in tree hollows, and moved around on all fours like monkeys. According to Marina, the monkeys only taught her how to hunt but did not feed her on her own. Thanks to her dexterity and resourcefulness, Marina managed to learn how to survive and the capuchins eventually began to treat her as a congener. Marina's story is one of the most unusual of its kind. When she told it to the world, most people didn't believe her. They even forced her to undergo x-rays to determine whether she had really been malnourished and lived in the wild. The test results confirmed her story. Marina Chapman now lives in Yorkshire with her husband and two daughters. Marina Chapman was lucky in that, in the end, she was able to socialize and became a normal person. But that's not always the case. Stay tuned to see a girl raised by animals who was never able to fit into society and returned back to the wilderness. You'll also see a guy who got raised by chickens and people who were sheltered by dogs. Let's move on. Rocham Penang In 2007, a female Mowgli was found in Cambodia. She had a wild appearance, walked hunched over, and couldn't speak articulately. Instead, she made noises resembling the roar of mooing animals. When news about the girl spread across the country, it was determined that she was Rochog Penang. Her parents identified the girl from a scar on her arm that she got as a child. As it turned out, the girl went missing back in 1989 when she was eight years old. While driving a buffalo through the woods, Rochong disappeared along with her sister. The sister was never found and Rochong was found 18 years later. The parents then welcomed Rochong back into the family where the Mowgli girl lived for three years. During that time, she was never able to learn the local language and she was unable to tell exactly who she grew up with in the woods. In addition, Rochong was unable to socialize. She continued to crawl and walk hunched over, refused to wear clothes, and was afraid of people. Moreover, the girl began to look even worse than when she lived in the wild. In 2010, Rochong escaped into the woods where she felt much more comfortable. To date, nothing is known about the fate of the Mowgli girl, but it's possible that now Rocham is alive and feels really happy with the animals. Sujit Kumar Children raised by monkeys, children raised by wolves. All of these stories are amazing but not too original. And what about the child who was raised by chickens? <laughs> yes, these birds can raise a human too. And Sujit Kumar is a great example. This boy from Fiji was nicknamed the Chicken Boy and for good reason. 
In 1978, when Sujit was eight years old, he was found on the street. The boy was roosting and waving his hands to imitate a rooster. To make matters worse, his fingers were twisted from picking at the ground. He pecked at food, jumped up in the air, and imitated the behavior of chickens. Sujit couldn't talk, just clicked his tongue rapidly. As it turned out, the reason for this behavior was terrible. Sujit's mother had committed suicide and his father had passed away early, so his grandfather became the child's guardian. He promised to take care of Sujit, but instead he locked him up in the poultry coop. It's not known why he decided to commit such a savage act, but fortunately, about eight years later, Sujit managed to escape from the coop. Sujit was picked up by social workers and taken to a shelter. It would seem that the boy's suffering was over, but no. At the shelter, they treated him just as cruelly. The staff saw that Sujit was being extremely aggressive and decided to tie him to the bed. The boy lived in these conditions for 20 years. It wasn't until Sujit was about 30 years old that he was rescued from the shelter by Elizabeth Clayton, who's been taking care of him ever since. Oksana Malaya Oksana Malaya, a girl from Ukraine, had a very difficult childhood. She was born into a family of careless parents who constantly drank. When Oksana was three years old, her parents abandoned her in the yard. In search of warmth, the three-year-old crawled into the barn, curled up among the yard dogs, and fell asleep. It saved her life. Either her parents had completely forgotten about their daughter, or Oksana subconsciously realized that it was dangerous to return home to her mother and father. But the girl lived with the dogs for about six years. In 1991, when Oksana was eight years old, she was found at the kennel. When the girl was found, she was running on all fours, breathing with her tongue out, baring her teeth, and barking. Of course, the girl couldn't speak. Because she ended up in a pack of dogs at a very young age, she knew only two words, yes and no. Moreover, Oksana ate and bathed the same way that dogs do. After the rescue, Oksana Malaya was removed from her parents and placed in a clinic where the girl dog was rehabilitated, taught to speak, and introduced to society. Most of her behavior problems were solved. Oksana learned to speak fluently, however, she could not fully recover. Even after 30 years, the woman still suffers from some disorders. Since 2001, Oksana has been living and working in a nursing home, taking care of cows and horses. Ivan Mishikov While Oksana Malaya was simply forgotten about by her parents, Ivan Mishikov ran away from home on his own. Ivan had always been a burden to his family, so when he was four years old, he decided to run away from home. For a while, the boy lived on the street and begged. Eventually, Ivan became attached to a pack of stray dogs. They kept the boy warm in the cold, and Ivan shared the food he managed to get with them. The dogs began to trust him, and eventually, he became something of a pack leader. You can say that the dogs raised Ivan, although he didn't live with them for very long. Two years later, police officers found Ivan and removed him from the pack. After that, he was sent to an orphan home. Mishikov's story is different from many others in this episode because Ivan didn't live in the wild. Moreover, he actively used speech when begging, so he didn't have to learn to speak. The orphan home staff was only focused on bringing Ivan back to society. Because Mishikov was wild only for a short time, it accelerated his recovery. Now the boy is living a normal life. He says he's grateful to the stray dogs because without them, he'd hardly have lasted on the street. At the same time, Ivan thanks the police for removing him from the wild pack in time. The following protagonists of this episode found themselves one-on-one -on -one with animals not in the wild but in a zoo. Some accidentally fall over fences, while others deliberately get into the cage to dangerous predators. Why do they do it? And how can such an encounter end? Let's find it out! About the Maternal Instinct Many fans of animal videos probably know about the case in the Cincinnati Zoo, where a gorilla guarded a boy who fell into an enclosure from its congeners, quietly waiting for help from rescuers. This case is considered no more than a happy coincidence, and in vain it turns out that history knows other evidence that gorillas do not harm children, even if they're unexpectedly in their territory. A great example is a case that occurred in Illinois in August 1996. The circumstances were similar. Once again, the boy fell into the enclosure with the gorillas, but miraculously, he didn't suffer any serious injuries. This time, the maternal instinct of the huge ape also worked without fail. The huge ape carefully picked up the three-year-old boy, 
and then carried him to the door through which the zoo workers usually entered the enclosure. Journalists were able to find out that everything turned out well for the boy and he didn't need long-term hospitalization. The mother and son preferred not to reveal their names to journalists, but the gorilla became a real TV star. Strange Intruder In India, a man decided to test his nerves in a very strange way. The daredevil jumped over the six-meter-high wall of the local zoo into the enclosure with the tigers. Inside, he took off his T-shirt and started pacing from corner to corner, clearly trying to annoy the inhabitants of the cage. The performance of the man, who, according to journalists, was quite drunk, lasted about 45 minutes. During this time, the intruder managed to walk, dance, sit in a lotus position, and drink some liquid from a bottle, which he had thoughtfully brought with him. Surprisingly, during all this time, the tigers in the enclosure did not react at all to the antics of the stranger. Moreover, they hastened to get into the interior of the enclosure, where the guards had locked them up. As for the tiger lover, he was dragged out of the enclosure by the police. All for the sake of the phone A very revealing incident happened recently in a Chinese zoo. A young man there was trying so hard to take a good photo with monkeys that he dropped his phone right into the enclosure. What do you think he did after that? That's right, he got into the enclosure to save his property. I don't know how much the daredevil's gadget cost, but the adventure obviously cost the guy a lot. As soon as he stepped into the monkey's territory, all the monkeys in the enclosure rushed forward and attacked the trespasser. The unequal battle continued until zoo workers came to the aid of the visitor. On the one hand, the guy did get his phone, but on the other hand, was it worth it? Would you go into an enclosure with wild animals for an expensive gadget, or would you do something smarter? Write in the comments what you would do, and stay tuned because further there are incredible cases of people ending up in animal cages, enclosures, and even swimming pools. Let's move on. Unexpected Rescue Sometimes it's the wild animals you find yourself alone with that turns out to be the only one creature which can help. A beluga whale saved the life of a diving girl paralyzed by the cold water in an ice-cold pool. The case took place in the Chinese city of Harbin at a diving competition in the Polar Land Aquarium, home to beluga whales. Participants had to dive to the bottom of the deep pool without breathing apparatus and stay underwater as long as possible. 26-year-old diver Yang Yan felt her leg cramped up due to the extremely low temperature after a 4-meter dive. She realized she was suddenly no longer able to make it to the surface. Meanwhile, the great depth and narrow bottom of the pool made it very difficult for the judges to spot serious problems in time. However, the beluga whale, called Mila, which lived in the pool, noticed Yan Yang's troubles just in time. It used its sensitive nose to gently push the girl out of the water. Once the girl was pulled out of the water, she was given first aid. As Yang Yun said later, she overestimated her own strength and was grateful that the beluga whale saved her life. Tiger Protects Man In 2016, a tragedy almost happened at a Mexican rehabilitation center for big cats. Eduardo Serio, an employee and founder of the center, miraculously did not fall victim to the leopard Dharma. No one expected the insidious attack. The predators were fed and they'd long been accustomed to Serio. Almost every day he'd visit the enclosures where the predators were kept. Serio just wanted to communicate with the big cats, but one day a communication almost ended up in tragedy. The footage shows Eduardo entering the enclosure to interact with white lions. Serio is engrossed in the lions and doesn't see the leopard called Dharma slowly approaching him from behind. No doubt the leopard was clearly seen by the cameraman, but in reality he says everything happened so fast that he didn't have time to make a sound. Surprisingly, another resident of the enclosure, a tiger named Atslan, saved Eduardo from an imminent attack. The protector intercepted the leopard right in the air when it was already jumping on Serio and knocked it down. I don't know what the tiger's intentions were. Did it really want to protect the man? Or the leopard's attack simply awakened its hunting instinct? What do you think? A piece of beauty What do you think are the animals in the zoo that suffer most from human attacks? If statistics are to be believed, peacocks are among the leaders. It would seem that the enclosures where these birds are kept are always surrounded by netting. That's right, but the most courageous visitors of the zoos who want to take with them at least a piece of peacock feather don't think about such trifles. Just recently, several young people got into a cage with peacocks in one of China's zoos. They all began to pluck the tail feathers and tried so hard 
that the unfortunate birds had almost nothing left. After that, the cages with the birds were taken under heavy guard. I wonder what the ignorant thieves did with the feathers. Did they put them in a vase at home? In a cage with a crocodile Everyone knows that Australia is inhabited by many dangerous creatures, but some residents still lack adrenaline. One of them, being heavily intoxicated, got into the cage with a reptile in the local zoo and survived. A true miracle considering the crocodile clearly didn't like the intrusion. It bit the stranger's leg but then suddenly let him escape. Why the crocodile, which, by the way, was one of the largest species in the world, acted so humanely? It remains a mystery. Zoologists believe that the cool weather that settled in Australia that day had an impact. The result was that the crocodile was sluggish and didn't move much, so it relied heavily on food provided to it by zoo staff. Apparently, the insolent citizen seemed to the resident of the enclosure too difficult and frisky prey. But what about the daredevil who got into the enclosure? The victim himself explained his action by the fact that he simply wanted to pet the crocodile. The Lion Whisperer is it possible to become a true congener for wild predators? Is it possible to enter a cage without fear and even play with the animals that would rather eat any stranger for dinner? It seems to be real, after all. Living proof of such a phenomenon is zoologist Kevin Richardson. For over 20 years, Kevin has lived side by side with hyenas, lions, cheetahs, and leopards. Very dangerous wild animals easily accept him into their packs and prides. At the same time, Richardson does not use traditional cruel methods of training. Intimidation of animals with sticks and chains is not for him. According to the man, he uses love, understanding, and trust to establish a friendly relationship with the big predators. He can safely sleep next to a lion, put a hyena in his car, or swim with a huge lioness, which can easily drown Kevin. There are dozens or even hundreds of videos of Kevin entering the cages of Africa's most dangerous animals on the internet. The potential danger doesn't seem to bother him one bit. However, Kevin did not become a successful scientist with the proud title of the Lion Whisperer right away. His childhood was not a good one, and after school he changed his mind several times about what he wanted to do with his life. Only by the age of 23, after trying several educational institutions and a lot of part-time jobs, Kevin found his calling. The new place of work for the restless explorer was the Lion Park, where he was hired as a caretaker. At the time, the guy tried to tame his first lions. The choice fell on two juvenile males. It was not an easy task to tame a grown-up animal, especially for a man with absolutely no experience. But despite the big risks, Kevin managed to make friends with the big cats. Tao and Napoleon became his first friends among lions. The tamer played freely and even slept together with the two adult males. However, unconditional love is out of the question here. From his experience, Richardson confidently states that their friendship does not make the lions any less dangerous. In spite of their good relationship, Kevin never wakes up the predators or disturbs them when they're eating because animals can pounce out of fear. Kevin respects the privacy of his predatory friends. Animals show their love and loyalty to their owners not only when their owners are alive, they also grieve when they're gone. From the most loyal dogs in the world to the horse coming to say goodbye to its best friend. Dida. This little chihuahua had spent its whole life with its owner. When the woman passed away, the dog was confused and simply didn't know how to go on. Teresa, the daughter of the deceased, often visits her mother's grave. For Dida, these are happy hours when it can again spend some time with its dear friend. The dog unmistakably finds the very same tombstone and stays close to it for a long time. Dida's previous owner died in the hospital of a heart attack but even within the walls of the hospital, the loyal doggy stayed by her side. Now the beloved dog can only visit her grave, but it often refuses to leave. Despite the snow and cold, Dida is willing to sit by the rock for hours. If this isn't the best proof of a true friendship between dogs and humans. Molly One of the saddest things in the world is to lose a loved one and not be able to say goodbye. This sweet dog Molly was given that chance. The hospital staff was allowed to walk the dog to the room where its beloved owner was dying. Ryan Jensen was admitted to the hospital with a brain hemorrhage and the doctors were fighting for his life, but there was nothing they could do. Molly didn't understand what was happening and Ryan's family had already been told that their beloved son and brother would never recover. After a short negotiation with the paramedics, Molly was allowed into the room. This video is hard to watch. The whole family gathered around the bed to say goodbye to Ryan while Molly is still desperately reaching for him as if trying to wake him up. According to Jensen's relatives, he and his dog had been best friends for years. 
sad to watch the story of such great friendships come to an end. The Giraffe's Farewell Giraffes are difficult to compare to the pets we're used to. Despite its relatively calm temper, it's still a wild animal that's not at all accustomed to active interaction with humans. However, even wild animals can understand grief and have compassion when they see illness. A touching scene occurred at the Rotterdam Zoo in the Netherlands when a terminally ill employee who had worked there for 25 years was brought to the place of work so he could say goodbye to his colleagues. His job was to clean the cages, and so over the years he became friends with all the animals in the park. The request was fulfilled by a charitable organization which fulfills the last wishes of dying people. The sick man had to be carried on his hospital bed because not only was he no longer able to walk, but he was barely able to move. Mario knew that the end was near, so he asked to be taken to the giraffe's enclosure so he could say goodbye to his beloved animals. One of the first to say goodbye to Mario, who was terminally ill with cancer, was the oldest giraffe in the enclosure. When the bed was brought closer, the animal came up to Mario and kissed him, pressing its nose into his face. The moment of farewell was so touching that many of those present wept. Mario barely moved and spoke with great difficulty, but words were superfluous. His face said it all. Sully. In 2018, when Hawkeye's owner tragically died in Iraq, John's body was transported to his homeland to give the soldier a proper burial. The dog was also brought to the farewell ceremony. Many words were spoken and many tears were shed, but the most heartbreaking sight was Hawkeye that laid down at the foot of his owner's coffin at the very beginning of the ceremony and did not move until the very end of the ceremony. Though we cannot know how the dog felt at that moment, one look at it is enough to understand that it was deeply grieved for the loss of its friend. Now Hawkeye is living with a new family, as John had wished in his will. In its new home with three Labradors, in addition to the owners, the dog seems happy. Does it remember its first owner? Who knows? But dogs are clearly much more complicated creatures than we think. Caesar The death of an owner is a tremendous shock to any pet. The animal can become confused, aggressive, and sad, but those around it will be unable to help it and make amends for the loss. The case of a dog named Caesar can be considered special. The death of its owner literally stunned the animal. When Mehmet Ilhan was taken to the hospital to find out the cause of his pain, Caesar refused to eat. When it became clear that Mehmet's life could not be saved, the family began planning a funeral. In the procession, the dog was given a special place to say goodbye to its beloved owner. Caesar sat motionless beside the coffin while speeches were made. The family of the deceased had hoped that the dog would feel a little better after the funeral, but the animal was grieving too much. Caesar was adopted by Ali, Mamet's son. The man soon realized that the dog had made a habit of running away from home every day and was coming back only in the evening. On one such day, Ali decided to follow the fugitive and was amazed to find it running away to sit on the deceased owner's grave. Even after his death, the dog had not abandoned its habits and still decided to spend time near its dear friend. Sinbad Animals are capable of feeling deeply, but this is not just true of cats, dogs, or giraffes. For some reason of all the popular pets, parrots have the hardest time experiencing the death of their owner. These birds often become depressed and stop making contact with the world around them, and in particularly severe cases, vets even have to prescribe special antidepressants for them. This is the story of Sinbad, the African Grey Parrot. The touching moments were caught on camera only miraculously. When the owner with whom the parrot was inseparable for 25 years became seriously ill, Sinbad moved with her to the hospital and did not leave the elderly woman for a moment. Sinbad was very talkative before its owner's illness, but when things got bad, it fell silent. Specialists believe this was a reaction to the severe stress the animal was undergoing. Sereno 34-year-old Wagner de Lima Figueredo and his horse Sereno were almost inseparable. The bond only broke when Figueredo was tragically killed in a car accident. The deceased family and friends organized a traditional funeral procession, but Wagner's brother quickly realized that someone was missing from it. When Sereno was brought to the procession, there was a truly heartbreaking scene that left no one present indifferent. As the car with Wagner's coffin pulled up, the horse suddenly became anxious. 
it came to the car, sniffed the wood from all sides, and suddenly fell silent, resting its head on the lid of the coffin. All the way to the cemetery, the horse walked beside the hearse in which the owner was being carried. Sereno was constantly snorting and shifting its hooves indiscriminately. It seemed that the death of its owner had grieved it so deeply that it didn't know how to go on. Ringo and Sugar If a hopelessly ill person cannot be helped by doctors, it doesn't mean that their last days cannot be alleviated. When Vietnam War veteran Roberto Gonzalez found out that both of his kidneys were failing, it was clear he wouldn't live much longer. The man decided to meet his two adored horses, Ringo and Sugar, as his final wish. They're the only horses in the state of Texas officially registered as assistants for people with disabilities. In the last years of his life, Gonzalez often practiced with them. Not surprisingly, he wanted to see his faithful friends one more time before he died. Fortunately, the hospital staff and the man's family were able to quickly arrange a visit. The reunion took place right on the hospital's patio. Eyewitnesses reported that Gonzalez felt very bad, but as soon as the horses appeared, he opened his eyes and smiled. Always there. I'll warn you right up front. This story ended well. Not all the stories in this episode can be sad, right? And this story is about how well dogs sense when people need their help and support. Some dog owners even claim that their pets can read minds at a distance. There's no way to prove it, but listen to this story about something that just recently happened in Peru. This man was clearly having a fun night. He drank too much alcohol, fell, and cracked his head open. The wound was serious, and passers-by immediately called an ambulance. But when the paramedics arrived, it became clear that the man's two loyal dogs had no intention of leaving him, even on the way to the hospital. The paramedics had to leave the dogs in the car as they showed them they would look after their owner. The dogs followed him all the way to the hospital, the waiting room, the emergency room, and even the front door of the hospital ward. In spite of serious injury, the man kept an eye on his pets and even smiled to cheer them up. Unfortunately, we don't know all the details of the story, but one thing is certain, the man recovered. After all, how could it be otherwise when you're so welcome home? That's it for today. Which moment from this episode impressed you the most? Let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching.